today I'm going to take you on the Freedom Trail. Uh, the Freedom Trail is a 16-stop uh, tour. It starts off here in Boston Commons. Now, Boston Commons is the oldest park in the United States. It was founded in 1634. Uh, it's 44 acres. There's a lot of monuments here. Something really cool here. I'm going to take you over there. Uh, you probably didn't know this, but uh, you will. But let's go check out the Boston Commons and all the cool stuff they have here. Uh, they even have a carousel. They have an ice skating rink. Uh, they have a parking garage. So if you want to come here, you can park underneath of it. Uh, Cheers. If you want to go to a, the Cheers restaurant or bar, uh, it's not, it's just right back over there. Uh, let's go check it out. So if you like football, you're gonna find this interesting. From 1862 to 1865, the Oneida football team played here. They were the first organized football team in the United States. They played all comers. And from 1862 to 1865, their goal line was never crossed. So behind me is a skating park, an ice skating park. So once it gets cold enough, they will put water in here and freeze this bad boy up and everybody be able to skate so they can do some figure eights right yeah don't worry everybody's looking at me kind of crazy right now and i can understand why but i won't just show off my skating skills here I'll save it for the winter so at the boston commons the last thing i wanted to show you is a monument to robert gould and the 54th massachusetts regiment if you don't know who Robert Gould or the 54th Massachusetts Regiment is, I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, if you don't want to read about them, watch this movie called Glory. Okay? Glory was about them and they were the first African American uh, regiment in American history. And they fought with distinction and bravery and decisive batter, battle victories. Uh, but I'm going to show you some video of it. I was going to talk in front of it, but it's Saturday here in Boston and everybody and their cousins out. And right now there's a tour in front of it. And I didn't want to talk over the tour guide. So let's go check out the money. We're at stop number three, the Park West Church. Uh, this church is very historical. The top of the church spire goes 217 feet. From 1810 to 1828, this was the tallest building in America. Stop number four on the Freedom Trail is the Granary Burying Grounds. So it's named after the granary that was next door. It was founded in 1660. It is the final resting place for over 2,300 people, including Paul Revere, three signers of the Declaration of Independence, and five of the victims of the Boston Massacre.
that complete stop number four. I didn't do any talking in there, basically out of respect for it being a cemetery. So now we're gonna to go to the King's Chapel, which is stop number five. Now the King's Chapel was built originally as a wooden structure in 1688. In 1754, construction completed of the building that we see today. Uh, a little over 200 years, well, 206 years later, it was designed as a national landmark. So let's go check out some history. So besides the King's Church is the burial ground. Now the burial ground is pretty interesting because it's been under uh, public control. Uh, but in 1688, in order to build the wooden structure that used to be there, the royal governor annexed some of the land. So as you can see, the cemetery is right there. He took that. Now this is the oldest cemetery in Boston. Some of the notable people that are buried here, uh, Mary Shilton, uh, many believe she's the first person to step off the Mayflower, the first woman to step off the Mayflower. Uh, Paul Revere's sidekick during his famous The British Are Coming run uh, is buried here as well. So let's go check it out. Number six is the Benjamin Franklin statue in front of the old city hall. So stop number seven on the Freedom Trail is the Old Corner Bookstore. The Old Corner Bookstore used to be a publishing company. It is the oldest commercial building in Boston. Uh, the publishing company produced works by Longfellow, uh, such as The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere, uh, The Scarlet Letter, and The Battle Home of the Republic. Although it's not a bookstore or a printing company today, it's still in business and it is a Chipotle. So the meeting house was completed in 1729. In 1730, after the Boston Massacre, the had an annual uh, meeting here about it. In 1773, 5,000 people met here to discuss the taxation of uh, tea by the British. Uh, a couple hours later, they did this thing called the uh, I don't know, Boston Tea Party. So this is like the home for the Boston Tea Party planning party. Stop number eight on the Freedom Trail is the old State House. It is the oldest building that's uh, survived in Boston. Uh, the original one was made of wood and burnt down. This one's been around since 1711. Uh, it housed the governor's quarters, the courts, the mercantile exchange was on the top floor and the bottom floors were all warehouses. Um, so pretty cool to see that. Let's go check it out. Just so you know, when you do the Freedom Trail, I didn't point out earlier, but if you come by, you see that little red line right there? If you go to the start point and you follow the line, it'll take you to every point of the Freedom Trail. Now, here's something I did not know. They put a subway underneath of it. So underneath the uh, house is a subway. 
Stop 10 on the Freedom Trail is the Boston Massacre site. So in 1770, there's about three or 400 people standing on this corner and harassing and throwing projectiles at nine British soldiers. So those British soldiers volleyed around into the crowd, killing five. So it was led to be called a massacre by Paul Revere and John Hancock. It's known as the incident on King Street in Great Britain. Uh, so this, the, uh, in 1768, the British troops were sent here to help enforce parliamentary rule and things like that uh, because the uh, colonials were getting a little bit uh, restless. So the next stop on the Freedom Trail tour is Fennel Hall. Now, uh, Fennel Hall was built by Peter Fennel in 1741. It burnt down in 1761 and was rebuilt in 1762. Today, it's a marketplace, but during uh, the Revolutionary War, it was used as a theater. Stop on the Freedom Trail, Paul Revere's house. So not much to see for Paul Revere's house. I still have a, a few more stops to go and it's starting to get dark, so the line's long. So I'm not gonna go and wait in line to go see it. They're kind of rude and put like this big barricade in the middle of it so you can't even see anything. So off to the next one, Old North Church. All right, well, you know I'm a real estate agent too. So I was sitting out here, I was kind of curious what house is going for. So you can get a two bedroom, two bathroom duplex with an open floor plan, 1,229 square feet for a modest $948,000. Ooh, you can get a two bedroom condo. It's got one bathroom. 850 square feet, only $929,000. I think that's pretty affordable. Ooh, they even sell boats. So they have a Julie, right? It has 49 knot top speed and a fast cruise of 39 knots. It uh, has two inboard diesel engines, only $2,350,000. I think Julie is expensive. Hmm. The Old North Church was built in 1723. Uh, it played a pivotal role during the Revolutionary War as the uh, pastor would put the lanterns in the steeple to allow Paul Revere and the other writers to know exactly what was going on with the British movements. It is also the oldest church in Boston. North Church either because it's almost four o'clock. The sun sets in about two hours. I still have three more places to go, and one of them still about a mile away, maybe. So I need to get going.
14 Copse Hill Burial Ground. Now this burial ground uh, was the second cemetery in Boston. Uh, when it got expanded, they sold the expansion. The people that owned it sold it to the city for $10,000. And today that would be $195,000. Uh, a couple notable people, Prince Hall is buried here. He is an abolitionist and founder of Black Freemasonry. And then uh, there's a captain here. I'm gonna show you his headstone and you can see his name there. But he's famous for uh, smuggling stuff past the British. But they didn't like that. And uh, even after his death, when they buried him and put his headstone up, they shot musket rounds at his headstone. So there's about three or four holes in his headstone. So I'm gonna go check that out. All right, so the next stop, stop number 15. Got one more to go after that, is the USS Constitution. Now, the USS Constitution was put into service in 1797. It is still an active naval vessel. Active sailors from the Navy still serve on that ship. Uh, it's a special assignment. It'd be a pretty cool one, I think. Uh, but George Washington picked out the name is also known as Old Ironsides. So let's go check out Old Ironsides, AKA the USS Constitution, AKA the oldest serving naval vessel in the world, AKA awesome piece of history. So this tablet in the shipyard marks where the British reinforcements came during the Battle of Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill is actually behind that building about maybe half a mile. So we'll check that out. That's stop 16 of 16 on the Freedom Tour. So right now we're going to go check out the USS Constitution. thing that says number five on it do you know what that is anybody know what that is so back in the day they would put a hoist on that and they would use that to lift up the materials that went into the top floor now, I've been inside the Constitution before it's pretty cool they give you a display all the sailors that are stationed there dress in the attire of the era uh, so it's really cool to look at the line's kind of long so i'm not going to go on it because i still have a half a mile to walk or so to bunker hill and then i still got to get back and it's getting dark uh, so i'm gonna go take a look at a couple uh, other naval vessels that are out here there's a coast guard cutter uh, that's a, a sailboat and then a naval ship so let me show you a few other things So this is America's tall ship. It is the Bark Eagle. It is a Coast Guard cutter. Pretty awesome. It looks exactly like, well not exactly like, it's a three mast ship, just like the USS Constitution is. Pretty cool. So we're gonna go test my naval ship knowledge, uh, <laughs> other than a battleship and an aircraft carrier and a submarine. That's pretty much the extent, but I'm going to call this a destroyer. So we'll see if I'm correct. Ooh, guess what? I'm going to press myself. It is a destroyer. It is the USS Cason Young DD-793. If you're not uh, big on shipyards, uh, that big crane that's all rusted and not working probably anymore, it used to run up and down these rails you, to my right by my shoulder and then on the other side it would run all down those rails to the end of the pier 
and they would use that to unload the ships. Now we have those big industrial ones. Most of them now are just run by AI. It's pretty cool, but ooh, I just saw something pretty cool I'm gonna share. So I just learned something new about this shipyard. So this Charleston shipyard or Navy yard, uh, it was built in 1800 and they used it to build and repair and supply the nation's uh, warships. And for 174 years, the yard expanded to adapt and serve a growing, changing Navy. Uh, in World War II, they uh, brought in a bunch of plumbers and welders and pipe fitters, things like that, to work on building or repairing um, the ships that were damaged during World War II. So pretty cool. It was decommissioned in 1974. Uh, so it just serves as a national park uh, museum, I guess you could call it. Um, so you got this destroyer, then you got the Constitution, and then you have America's tall ship. All right, stop 16. Bunker Hill. Now Bunker Hill was probably the most pivotal battle to start the revolution. During that battle, the colonials, they suffered about 450 casualties, dead and wounded, and the British, over a thousand. So that led the colonists to know that they could hold their own against the British Army. So Bunker Hill is about four tenths of a mile from the shipyard, and they marched all the way over there uh, to meet the colonists because the British found out that they were having a little meeting over there. So uh, Breed's Hill is part of the battleground over there. Now, they've got a bunch of scaffolding around the monument. I've been in the monument. You can go all the way to the top. A lot of stairs in a circle. So I'm gonna see if I can get up in there and show you what it looks like. If not, you're gonna see a monument that looks a lot like the Washington Monument scaffolding around. Sadly, Bunker Hill is closed. You cannot get in there. So, going around a couple hundred steps in a circle, getting dizzy, you're gonna miss out on that fun. But it's hard to believe that on this hill and Breed's Hill, there's almost 2,000 people killed and wounded here. But this is like the formation, like the, the pinnacle that started our revolution in our country right here, right now.